Hey everyone, thanks for watching Test 2 Plus. This is a show where we take big topics in science, we break them down so that you can get a little more understanding of them. I've got here my friend Dr. Ian O'Neill, astrophysicist. Hey Ian, thanks for coming. Thanks, Trace. We're talking about aliens this week. What would aliens look like, Ian? I know. I got no clue. Thanks for watching Test 2 Plus. That's the whole episode. No, of course it's not. During the Cambrian explosion 600 million years ago, mm -hmm. there was a lot of body experiments by evolution. So. So some things worked, some things didn't. Right. So we right. just happened to be the things that worked. <laughs> and in an alien civilization, maybe. And who knows what would have worked? Right. I mean, I don't know. That's the problem, is that it, it, it's very determinant of what your environment is, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, in Star Trek, all aliens are bipedal, bibrachial, which is two arms. They have stereo vision, mostly look at the same visual, visible light stuff that we do. They hear similar ranges, so on and so on, right? Yeah, well, because they're actors. Right. They? I mean, what else can you do? Yeah. Babylon 5, they, they kind of went a little bit further. They had you know, the, the exosuits. Yeah, they had a lot. Cool. That was, Those were cool. Yeah, I like the Orlons, them. I yeah, the Vorlons. Them. They were very mysterious. Good memory. Good memory. Yeah. So... Not all planets are Earth-like. No. And, and how many Earth-like planets are there out there? Um, a handful. Well, no, we don't actually know any of the Earth-like. If you consider Earth-like being like Earth, Rocky we haven't water. found any yet. Really? We haven't found any. No, we don't know what. We don't know what's on those surfaces. We know there's approximately Earth-sized, but that's all we know at the moment. I mean, mm -hmm. the Kepler Space Telescope is looking for these worlds passing in front of other stars, and we know that a few of them are kind of Earth-sized, but we can't look at its atmosphere to see if there's water or oxygen or nitrogen. We just don't know that yet. Yeah, we just make some assumptions based yeah. on a variety of other things. So uh, Kepler-62 are all, they think, water planets, Ooh. which is pretty cool. Yeah, But... Um, Pretty Terra centric, really, is yeah. the problem, right? Well, yeah, no, it's a good place to start. We're we're looking for um, planets that resemble Earth, and we know that Earth kind of likes life, so why not? Yeah, that's, that's a good point. So, if we were trying to think more abstractly about what aliens look like, we're carbon-based life. We burn oxygen, but there's also other types of life, right? There's silicon-based life. Well, there might be. Maybe. Might be. It's possible. And the reason silicon is because it has the same periodic table group as us. Oh, okay. That's so it makes yeah. similar connections to carbon. Um, Carl Sagan pointed out maybe there's, uh, you know, things that don't care about water at all. Yeah, maybe yeah that's there are true. Maybe things that care about ammonia. I mean, just go look at Titan. So uh, one of um, the, one of uh, Saturn's moons, Titan, it's got lots of hydrocarbons on the surface. So a lot of scientists and, and astro, astrobiologists are thinking, okay, well, could there be some sort of life form that makes use of those chemicals, those prebiotic forms of chemicals? And it's funny, a recent bit of research, some chemical engineers, they've got a very can-do spirit. They thought, okay, well, if there was some other form of life, what, what form of life would it take? What, what form would it be in? Mm -hmm. And they said, okay, well, the, the components on Titan, there's a lot of methane, so can we have methane-based life? And they created one. They created a, um, like a, a cell, model? an alien cell, yeah, that, that pretty much does all the things life should do, but its base chemical is methane. Instead of carbon. Instead like of carbon, ours. yes. So, so all of us methane are based, Methane-based cell. It doesn't mean it exists. Huh. They, they just went into it with, the, you know, they're, they're engineers. They said, wow. okay, we're going to build something that works like life should. It doesn't mean it's there, but, right. but it's all possible. the components it's, are there. It's possible. It's possible. It's yeah. possible that, that the periodic table, I guess, allows for this type of life to exist. But Absolutely. whether it has evolved yeah. is a whole other question, which still doesn't really answer our, our, you know, our thesis here is what would aliens look like? Because what would that methane life look like? Well, just be I would a cell, know. right? Yeah, it's a, this is just a cell. Microbes. I mean, who knows what, what, what form it could take. But yeah, this was just a cell. It's just a, a circular cell. So It's kind of cute. So, so far, when we come to the imagination about aliens outside of Hollywood, mostly what we're thinking is, is microbes, right? Yeah. And so like Mars ancient microbes. Yeah, Mars, because Mars used to be a much better place. So okay. you've got um, Mars Rover Curiosity, NASA's awesome Mars Rover, currently looking for um, past habitability. And we've already found that Mars was once a lot wetter than it is now. So we're looking for ancient life, and we're also looking under rocks for perhaps there could be some microbes hiding out, really mm. tough microbes, mm -hmm. but you don't know. Yeah, but it's, un it's unlikely. It's unlikely, yeah, but, current, but you know, but we're still possible. looking. Also, yeah. 
Curiosity, what's up? You're on the other side of the sun right now. We can't talk to yeah, you. Yeah, he's so quiet. sad, kind of yeah. lonely, but still, still rocking out. What about like the ice moons of our? You know, we've got uh, the Europa Clipper mission. They're talking about. We've got Enceladus. We've got Ganymede. Those all are ice moons. Yep. And they have internal heat. Correct? Yes. So, so basically, heat and ice, which is water. That's two of the big. It's, Life. it's awesome and also nutrients we know that there is um it's an icy got an icy crust that protects the life if there was life inside uh -huh. it could it could form this barrier against the um the space radiation but as you mentioned um there's this interior heat source that keeps the ocean liquid and of course liquid water is very useful for life as we know it so you've got this nutrient cycling they also believe there could be um, a decent amount of oxygen in there that could wow. support not just single celled life forms but multi-cellular okay, life. Okay, okay. So now we're looking at like Europa Report, like Yeah. You no, know, spoiler alert, you know, plug your ears. Giant squiddy things. Yeah, so you want to know what aliens are like. My bet, either jellyfish oh, or squid. Gi wait, jellyfish? I hate jellyfish. Well, jellyfish, you know, jellyfish were, you know, at the start of the evolutionary trail, wasn't it, on Earth? So why why wouldn't there be jellyfish in, in Europa? And, you know, you got Enceladus as well, which you already know that's got a salty ocean underneath its icy right. crust. I mean, these are like little um, little packages of life possibilities. I mean, I find right amazing. Right in our own solar system. Yeah, literally on our own doorstep. That's, That's why we need so to get cool. probes onto the surface. And, you know, the so Europa cool. Clipper mission, which is going to go to Europa sometime in the next 10 years, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. But we need a probe in that ocean. We need a little submersible yeah. thing. Which brings us back to what we were talking about earlier, um, which you can check out yesterday's episode for, uh, which was how aliens might not be interested in communicating with us. So if I'm a giant squiddy thing living under an ice surface that's protecting me from the radiation of the sun circling Jupiter, I probably don't really care about talking to those things over on Earth. Well, right? they, they probably wouldn't have the ability when you think about it. I, I mean, yeah. how would they communicate? To each other? Or to us? Flashy things, like bioluminescence. Bioluminescence, yeah. yeah. Super cool. Yeah. In the end, I guess, um, evolution is just efficient, right? Mm -hmm. It's about adaptability and being able to, to win whatever environment you're in. Sure. So it's like bones, for example, on us are specific density, specific sizes. They can hold up specific amounts of weight mm -hmm. based on how they're constructed. And that is determined by evolution via gravity. Yeah. So it also determines uh, evolution also determines based on your atmosphere, based on what resources are available, and all of that is going to determine what alien life would look like. So uh, to run it down, how I started putting this together. So what do you think of this? Everything that we know of of life, which again, terra-centric, mm -hmm. kind of a, not a, the best way to think about it, but a way, has a protective coating to hold everything inside of itself. It's symmetrical or close to it here on Earth. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's normal or not. Consuming, which means it absorbs energy from its environment somehow. It's got a homeostasis, so it can maintain its own body environment somehow. So like, you don't just have viruses come in and suddenly it's a completely different thing, although maybe outside of Earth. What do you think? Who knows? I think all those things are great. But then again, you know, we're looking at uh, biology that we know and understand. There could be a completely different way of doing things out there. Yeah? Which I find quite interesting. Something that we can't even imagine. That's so cool. Just awesome to imagine. It's pointless talking about it. Yeah, it is kind of. So what do aliens look like? Uh, uh, do we, microbes, do, do, do for Do we sure. actually care? I mean, that's the thing. Microbes, for sure. Yeah. If aliens are out there, microbes, for sure. It's got to be microbes. We'll start at microbes. then. Multi-cell life. Squid. Squid. Squids? Squid. Cool. Down. Either way, would they come here? Or if they came here, what would happen? You're going to have to wait till tomorrow to find that one out. Make sure you subscribe for more Test 2 Plus. Thank you, Ian, for coming to talk to us. Thank you, Trace. And uh, also, while you're waiting for tomorrow's episode to come out, check out yesterday and the day before's episodes about whether we're alone in the universe and how we uh, are trying to listen for other races. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.